My first memory of the Goldberg Variations uh, dates back to my first year in high school. And I remember that I, um, I went over to the house of this boy that I really liked. And he played for me Glenn Gould's second recording of the Goldberg Variations. Uh, and just listening to the aria, it stopped me dead in my tracks. I mean, I, I really felt that it was a moment of epiphany for me hearing that. When Simona said, I also play the Goldberg Variations, I was like, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Goldberg Variations is, is almost certainly the most famous piece for solo piano. And, and that's especially true of, of our generation. Glenn Gould and movies, and it's a soundtrack. When she said Goldberg, I said no. And then I went back to that and I thought, maybe it's no, that's the reason why I should do it. And maybe because it's been done before is why I should do it. For both of them, it signified a shift in their sort of creative practice. Simona was, had never collaborated with dance in a creative capacity. Pam had worked for most of her career with very, very modernist music choices. Um, and I felt like it was going to be a really exciting challenge for her to have to tackle something as canon based as Goldberg. All the steps have been done and like what is new and what is original, like all those questions. Um, and I used to feel like there, everything had been done. There's a famous quote, a Balanchine quote. Uh, he, I'm gonna paraphrase, he says, you know, it's all, you know, it's all the same steps, just the new combinations. And I actually feel like I don't agree with that. And I think working on this piece has sort of, I've come full circle to see all po the possibilities. about the same age. We're both New York Jewish women with one child. Um, We've been working on our careers for a, a, a long time. A long like time. 25 uh, years. We're, we're kind of in it for the long haul. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, we like each other. Yes, I mean. <laughs> you know, anytime you put uh, artists together into collaboration, especially across disciplines, um, you, risk, you risk it <laughs> falling apart. of her choreography, she, it starts with an instinct that she has, and she really listens to her instincts. And she allows them to go in the wrong way, and then she tries it again. And I'm a lot like that too. My process of, of finding the music. Originally, I thought I would do, you know, this would be a solo and this would be a duet and this would be this and that and like sort of very clear cut and it's not that at all. It's like I have two, I have three solos back to back 
just because a dancer finishes a variation, they don't necessarily leave the stage. You know, I felt like I really wanted to deal with the, like not have everything be so um, sectional. One of the problems that I find with Bach is that um, a lot of the time people think that his music is motoric, that it has like a consistent pulse almost like a kind of click track, like there's a kind of automation to the, set, to the rhythm of his music. Um, and I don't feel that at all. I feel that um, it really breathes, there's an ebb and flow, um, that the pulse has to do with a much bigger beat. Choreographers are often used to um, setting something to a, a very specific, um, music and, 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 and employing the kind of timing of that music to make the dance. And so as a result, they don't want any, they want as little variation in performance as possible. Um, and in this, we were trying to build in the fact that Simona plays Goldberg probably a little bit differently every time. This piece was a, uh, an exercise in restraint. We came to it with a lot of ideas, like too many, and we had to keep like pulling out, like what is essential, what is this piece about? And ultimately, the piece is about the piano. She did in rehearsal try her getting up. We tried her like walking. Like we had this idea that um, she was gonna get up and we we're gonna like put the recording on for one of the variations. We thought, but then it was like too funny and too trying too hard. You know, like we tried different things, but it was great that we tried them because then I was confident that that's all. She just needs to play, you know, and like be her performing in the center. Originally, she was going to be dressed something as related to the dancers, but then we thought that was too much. Like, she should be a part of the piano. I mean, I think that there's a moment musically around that variation, which we call the sad circle dance, which is sort of halfway through the piece that something changes tonally or we're reminded of a sort of sadder, deeper sonic world. And there's all sorts of like emotional storytelling happening that's not at all about story, but that is just about experience. I think it all sort of stems from this like pulsing, beating heart of the piano and Simona's performance of Goldberg and that the dance seems to be this sort of this like visual expression of the experience of listening to Simona. I go back and forth between wanting to look at them and finding it distracting. Like it, it's both things and mm -hmm. also like, <laughs> I have really bad motion sickness, and sometimes I actually feel like I'm gonna throw up. Really? Oh my god, that's hilarious. Good, we're both throwing up. I'm in the back throwing up, you're on stage throwing up. It is really interesting being in the middle of all of this action. I mean, first of all, to be this close to dancers is quite something. The stage shakes, uh, they, you know, I feel the wind of when they're moving around me, there's a breeze. Pam doesn't have them count, have the dancers count. So sometimes they are creating rhythms that are separate from the rhythms that I'm playing. Yet, 
they actually create really interesting cross rhythms with what I'm doing. So um, that has made me hear certain sections of the piece in a different way, rhythmically. Before they even start dancing, there's a story. A male and a female body. Even before they do anything, there's already a story. So I don't need to add, there's no, there's no uh, linear narrative. To me, the language of music is the most potent language and the most natural language for me to speak. Um, and I, I feel like it's pre-verbal. And uh, I think that Pam thinks of dance that way too, that the, the language of movement is something that is separate from words. notice that like they're all and when they're in unison um, they're dancing the same steps and the approach is the same but they look different the steps are just a way to like reveal them if it was all female like it would be hard to even some people might not even notice but when you have it's like when you have not, you know all you need the sweet with the sour, you know, you need the both to, to realize, oh, when he leaves, it's all female, or oh, he's the only male. In 2017, there is absolutely something important about two women making a work of art um, still. Um, the thing that I've encountered, which I've always been kind of puzzled by, is that a lot of people in, in writing about my work or even talking to me directly have said that my playing is feminine. And I have no idea what that means. Like uh, to me, that, that's just so weird to say that the music, that an interpretation is feminine. When people write about my work, they're, they compare me, the, all the choreographers they compare me to are male. None are female. And I just realized that um, a couple months ago. I don't think either of these artists is making a female version of the Goldberg Variations. I think it just happens to be run by women. Um, but it's, it's absolutely, to me, an essential part of the piece and its creation and the world that it inhabits and the world that we see as an audience. It, it's very female and it's such a welcome place to be. I think that that's such a beautiful, beautiful quote from Bach when he says that, that he wrote this piece for music lovers for the re refreshment of their spirit. It's a very personal piece of music that is about the relationship between the person playing it and the music. I have to say, I don't think about the audience very much. I'm opening up a window or a door and the audience, they can look through it or they could step through the door. But I'm not trying to make an impression on them. I'm, I'm concerned with the art itself, um, the piece itself. But when I'm working with Pam and the dancers, we're concerned with what we're making. The process of creation um, as a performer is, is endless. I mean, I, I've performed the Goldberg Variations probably hundreds of times now, and it's just never the same. The thing about it is that you have to engage in the present moment as if you never encountered it before. Whenever I play this piece, 
I feel that there's something about it that just feels so completely transcendent and you feel like you've gone through a passage of time and experience and you don't feel quite the same at the end of it. <laughs>